diagnosis in orthodontics. The diagnostic procedure in orthodontics follow multiple steps for the composition of the problem-oriented approach. The problem-oriented approach is com composing a problem list of each individual patient by following the three major steps for collection of the data about the patient, which include the questionnaire interview or the case history, clinical examination, diagnostic record, or diagnostic aid. In the questionnaire and interview, we ask the patient about his name, age, gender, uh, address, uh, the chief complaint, refer by who, and the uh, and if there is any interdisciplinary treatment with other branch of dentistry. The clinical examination include, uh, include the all the clinical examination of the extraoral examination and intraoral examination. The clinical examination include the facial proportion in all the three planes of the space which is called the macroesthetic in addition, the dentition in relation to the face and the uh, lips examination, which is uh, called the mini aesthetics, and third, the teeth in relation to each other, which is called the micro aesthetic. The clinical examination is recorded in the case sheet, including the oral hygiene status, oral function evaluation mandibular movement evaluation the oral hygiene status either good fair or poor for patient the mastication if it's normal and the abnormal abnormal mastication could affect on the occlusion of the teeth and may cause in some cases a malocclusion the presence of the sleep apnea of the patient or disturbance of the sleeping of the patient may affect on the growth and development of maxillae are causing a posterior crossbite. Temporomandibular problems such as clicking may be affected by the myoclusion and the abnormal movement of the mandible may cause a, a malocclusion. The facial proportion macroesthetic include the facial asymmetry examination, vertical proportion, skeletal pattern, and the lip posture. And the mini aesthetic include the dental midline. If there is a deviation, a deviation to the left or right, and the left line, if it is normal, high and low. The clinic, when when an orthodontic patient enter to the clinic, can be diagnosed from his first entrance uh, of the body bolt of the patient. Uh, the body bolt of the patient is uh, can be uh, classified to three types either the ectomorphic, mesomorphic, or endomorphic patient. The ectomorphic patient characterized by thin and tall patient, and this, the facial proportion or the facial bone are uh, mostly uh, long in this patient. The mesomorphic patient or average patient mostly have a straight profile and normal growth of the facial bone. The endomorphic patient or obese or short patient characterized by short faces mostly. The uh, head or the skull can be measured or ca categorized into uh, three types, either mesocephalic, bradycephalic, and dinicocephalic. These three types are classified according to the cephalic index. The cephalic index include the uh, uh, width of the skull divided on the length of the skull. When the skull have an average width to the length, it's called the mesocephalic head or mesocephalic skull. When the uh, width of the skull is more than the length of the skull, it's give you a short or broad skull and this is called the brachycephalic head. Dinicocephalic uh, head when the length of the uh, skull 
is large in relation to the width of the skull and it's characterized by long and narrow skull which give you a long face. The facial index it's include the morphologic facial height divided on the bizygomatic width. In normal patient or uh, class 1 patient have a, a width of or bizygomatic width divided on the neck it's normal and co uh, called the mesoprospic facial skeleton when the facial height is long in relation to the facial width it's called uroprospic patient and it's characterized mostly with an anterior open bite the patient with deep bite mostly have leptoprospic uh, characteristic which include either the width of the face is higher than the height of the skull or the height of the skull is short that give you a leptoprospic uh, characteristic of the facial index. When doing an extra oral examination the patient should, should sit in the natural head posture. The advantage of the natural head posture is to standardize the measurement of the head or uh, the measurement of the face during the clinical examination and the measurement of the face during the clinical examination could be reproducible between the visit and between the dentist when the natural head posture is achieved. For achieving of the natural head posture of the patient, ask the patient to sit on the dental chair and see a subject away from him at the level of his eye and in this position the patient will give you the natural head posture or the head posture that can be naturally reproducible by himself and it is repeated, uh, repeated this posture. In this posture, the Frankfurt plane is parallel to the floor of the clinic. In the natural head posture, all the measurement can be standardized and the true vertical line pass through the uh, point A of the maxilla. The patient, when he is in not the natural head posture, either posture his head anteriorly or posture head, head, his head posteriorly and the posterior posture of the head and the anterior posture of the head cause unstandardized or unaccurate measurement while the natural head posture give you always a standardized and accurate measurement during the clinical examination. The anterior posterior skeletal relationship or the skeletal pattern of the jaw can be examined firstly either visually from the profile picture or profile position of the patient by taking a three point the first point is the glabella the second point at the base of the nose which is called the subnasally and the third point at the anterior border of the chin which is called the begonion by drawing the first line, imaginary first line, from the glabella to the subnasally and the second imaginary line from the subnasally to begonia. In a, in a class 1 skeletal pattern or when the normal relationship of the maxilla and the mandible where the maxilla is 2 to 3 millimeter anterior to the mandible the facial profile of the patient have a straight profile and in this case the uh, straight profile of the patient indicating a class 1 skeletal pattern while when the two lines are uh, making an angle with convex profile between the first line and the second line the convex profile and the angle is toward the face indicating the patient have a convex profile and class 2 skeletal relationship the 
two lines when forming an angle away from the face with concave profile indicating that the patient have a skeletal class 3 relationship. In the bimaxillary protrusion, the uh, patient have either convex profile or straight profile with, anteri with anterior divergent of the face and this indicating a class 1 relationship. The facial divergence mean the relationship in the in between the forehead and the lower facial height or the inclination of the straight line that uh, drawn from the forehead to the subnasally uh, sub and the same line from the subnasally to the bogonion when this line is inclined and posteriorly as in this patient it's indicate a posterior divergence of the face while in this picture the patient have a straight profile while in this patient the lower facial height is anterior in relation to the forehead so the patient have an anterior divergence of the face the three cases are class one skeletal relationship straight to profile but the straight to profile in this case have a posterior divergent here an anterior divergent here is a, a straight profile and the three patients are a class one profile the facial divergence also present in the concave cases or the class three cases as mentioned before either concave profile class three or K concave profile class three with posterior divergent that means the lower facial height is posterior in relation to the forehead or concave profile or class three with anterior divergent the facial divergence also present in the class two convex profile where the uh, some cases with convex profile and the class 2 have an anterior divergent profile or posterior divergent profile the second method for evaluation or examination the skeletal pattern or the antero posterior uh, relationship between the maxilla and the mandible is by using of the two finger method or the digital method or palpation method or called the four-star palpation test in this method the dentist use the the, uh, in the, uh, the index finger and the middle finger where the index finger put on the point a of the maxilla and the middle finger on the point B of the mandible. The two, the index finger should be parallel to the floor of the clinic and should touch the maxilla at the same time the middle finger touch the mandible. And in this case, the patient have a class one relationship. When the index finger is anterior to the middle finger, that means the patient have a class two relationship while the uh, middle finger went ahead or anterior to the index finger meaning the patient have a class 3 relationship the vertical proportion or the examination the vertical dimension of the face is by using of the third law rule third rule include dividing the face into three thirds the first third is the upper facial height and the middle facial height and the lower facial height. The upper facial height from the subnasally, sorry, from the nasion to the hairline and the middle third is from nasion to the base of nose or the subnasally area and the lower facial height is from the subnasally to the mentor. We depend on the middle facial height, which represent the uh, distance from the nasion to the subnasally, and this third is uh, accurate third or regard 
the dependable measurement for the lower facial height. The lower facial height, the lower facial height can be divided into uh, one third, which represents the upper lip, and lower two third, which re represent the lower lip and the chin height. In, nor patient, in the normal patient, the middle facial height is equal to the lower facial height. When the lower facial height is less than the middle facial height, that means the patient have a decreased lower vertical dimension, and in this case, the patient may be have a deep bite dentally. The, on the other side, when the lower facial height is more than the middle facial height, indicating that the patient have a long face, and in this case, the patient may be have an anterior open bite. The vertical dimension also measured by the angle that forms between the Frankfurt plane and the mandibular plane. The mandibular plane is the tangent of the lower border of the mandible. The angle between the Frankfurt plane and the mandibular plane is equal to 27 degrees, and when this angle is more than 27 degrees, that means the patient have the increase in the lower vertical dimension or the lower facial height, and maybe have the patient a skeletal open pipe. On the other hand, when the angle between the Frankfurt plane and mandibular plane is less than 27 degrees, that the patient have a decrease in the anterior facial lower facial height or a skeletal deep bite. The third dimension of the face that should be examined is to represent the transverse dimension of the face patient, which include the facial symmetry and the arch width. The facial symmetry of the patient, in normal patient, there is a minor facial asymmetry between the right and left side. So in this picture, it's the normal picture of the patient. When composing a picture of the two half of the left side of the patient, we found there is a face that is broader than the face that composed from the two sides of the right side of the patient. So that means the normal patient have a minor asymmetry of the face about two to three millimeter and this minor asymmetry regard a normal variation between the patient and accepted an orthodontic treatment. The white face or the uh, uh, white uh, bizygomatic width of the patient indicating or effect on the arch width and the white face give a wide and u-shaped arch uh, width while the narrow width of the face indicating <coughs> indicating there is a decrease in the uh, a decrease in the arch width the width of the face or the transverse examination of the face or the facial uh, facial a facial transverse width of the patient is by dividing the face to a fifth and it is called the rule of the fifth. The standard fifth of the face is the width of one eye or the distance between the canthi inner and outer canthi of the eye. The width of the eye is the standard division of the fifth of the face or width of the face so the middle fifth of the face represent the width of the nose and it, the two lines of the first or the central fifth it represent the position of the maxillary canine the interpupil 
distance represent the width of the mouth and the eye width represent the outer uh, boundaries of the eye width of the face the gonial angle and the intergonial width or the width or transverse dimension of the mandible in the transverse examination we can also check if there is an occlusal canting in the occlusal plane by comparing the occlusal plane and the transverse dimension in the frontal view of the patient with the interpupillary line or by asking the patient to put a tongue blade or wooden tongue blade on the occlusal plane and check if there is a canting in the occlusal plane to the left side or to the right side the lips or represent the examination of the mini aesthetic of the patient and include the lip fullness nasolabial angle lip tone uh, lower lip line lip competency and labiomental sulcus for the lip fullness the lip is classified into protrusive straight and retrusive uh, lip position either uh, by using a ricket e line or e line the e line is represent the line extend from the tip of the nose to the anterior border of the of the chin when the lips upper lip and lower lip touching this line the lips regarded as a straight lip fullness when the lips are posterior to the e line it's regarded as a retrusive lip fullness when the lower lip is touching beyond this line it's regarded as a protrusive uh, lip thickness the lip competency include either competent lip that means the patient can close his lip with minimal muscle contraction on the other hand the potentially competent lip that means the patient need a minor force or muscular tone for closing his lips due to the uh, due to the proclination of the upper incisors and on the other hand the incompetent lip that the patient cannot close his lip comfortably due to either the short lip or the proclination of the incisors or retroclination or retrognathic mandible. The labiometal fold is represent the fold between the lip and the chin and this fold varies from normal curvature or deep curve the deep curvature of the labiometal fold indicating the short lower facial height while on the other hand when there is an increase in the lower facial height the labiometal fold will be shallow and obliterated for the nasal evaluation or include the radix the radix or the soft nasion area the nasofrontal angle this is the nasofrontal angle nasal hump nasal dorsum and the nasolabial angle in orthodontic treatment it's important the nasolabial angle and this angle formed by the tangent to the base of the nose or the ala of the nose the other tangent is to the anterior border of the upper lips the two tangent form an angle this angle its range between 90 to 120 degree when the lip is retrusive 
due to retrusion of the incisors, this angle will be obtuse. On the other hand, when the incisors are broke lined, the upper lips will be protrusive position and the angle will be acute. This angle can be modified by the nose when the nose, the tip of the nose is upward, this angle will be obtuse or when the uh, nose tip or tip of the nose is downward, the angle will be acute. So the uh, position of the nose tip can affect on the nasolabial angle. The importance of the nasal, uh, nasolabial angle is to distinguish if the uh, class 2 or proclamation of incisors is due to the dental origin or skeletal origin. Thank you.